Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring you the retrospective for UFC Fight Night where Devinson Figueredo defeated Joseph Benavides in a heartbreaking affair. We actually had a really good night though, uh, you know, besides the Benavides loss, although I did pick Figueredo so it's kind of a weird crapshoot, uh, but I still felt for the guy because I wanted him to win in my heart. The numbers at Figueredo, they worked out and overall we worked out 75% accuracy, accuracy uh, two and two on the Patreon, so we made money. We went those underdogs, and we came out just a little bit ahead. We were in the money, so up is up. 75% accuracy is awesome. We killed it. Fortunately, Joseph Benavides couldn't, but I picked it right anyways with Devinson. Uh, you know, I made a mistake by not going with Devinson in uh, the money side of things, but that is what it is. I'll talk about it. Let's get into it. Here's the show. <laughs> All right, so as I was saying earlier, I was a little devastated about the Joseph Benavides loss, but we ultimately did pick this one right. And when I say devastated, I mean, I'm just kind of, I just feel for Benavides and his wife, Megan Olive. You know, I really like Megan. A lot of MMA fans do. She's basically the face of MMA journalism for a lot of people. You know, she does basically the equivalent of sideline reporting. She's kind of the face and and, uh, you know, because of her relationship with Benavides, I really wanted Benavides to win. He had gone to the dance so many other times, just came up short. And in this one, I really thought he was going to do it. Figueroa didn't make way. I didn't know how serious he was taking things. And, you know, because of what my heart wanted, I decided to pull Benavides, sorry, pull Figueroa out of the Patreon picks. You know, I, I warned against it, and it ended up being wrong thing for me to do I always got to go with the numbers but I literally let my heart sway me on this one and that's that's a mistake from the numbers perspective but I am human I do make mistakes ultimately it was a good pick though and so the metric worked and if you took it still you know you obviously are in control of what you do if you took it you came out on top with that one it was a good underdog pick for Figueroa and he devastated Benavides Benavides looked very stiff he didn't he was reaching way over extending to engage and that's kind of where things fell apart you know in the first round, I thought he looked a little stiff. He did start connecting, but there wasn't much power on it. You know, Figueroa is a really big guy compared to Benavides, and Benavides had to keep reaching for those shots. So in the second round, Benavides is reaching for a shot, overextending, and he doesn't get clipped or anything, but he does drive his head through the shot to extend to reach Figueroa and headbutts Figueroa, uh, basically coming in. I don't think Figueroa was to blame in this headbutt at all, and then that definitely opened up a really nasty cut on Benavides' forehead. He was bleeding immediately. It was spurting out. It looked like real nasty stuff. He was probably a little bit concussed. And then right down the pipe, Figueroa catches him. I'm, I don't know how with it Benavides really was, how lucid he was when he went down. But he catches up. He crumbles right in front of Dan Mergliata. And that's all she wrote. Figueroa becomes the winner but not the champion of the division because he didn't make weight he came up two and a half pounds shy and you know maybe if it was Vegas maybe if it was different different athletic commission they would have given him more time but Virginia didn't give him more time to make weight and that's kind of where things ended so we ended up with kind of an anticlimactic event even though it was a phenomenal win for Figueroa that I was happy to call correct but yeah I just you know just disappointed for Joe disappointed myself for not taking the gamble on it because I had it uh you know picked and ended up coming out so correct uh that it was just uh, kind of kind of tough for me but like I said we came out overall on top tonight we were in the money two and two on the Patreon because we went good on the underdogs we came out on top there was a uh, one of the picks that I, I thought was a little controversial I'll talk about that one when we get to the Kudaleba Ankalev fight um but a good card overall for us regardless of how you look at it. Um, where the flyweight division goes next, though, I'm not really sure. During the post-fight, I think Michael Bisping brought up maybe running it back due to the missed weight, the possible headbutt being a factor, although Benavides, I think, was to blame for the headbutts. So I don't know how I really want to look at that one. And um, Benavides was out striking him. He looking here, 46 to 25. You know, Benavides was putting it on, but just that lack of power and smaller size just, just wasn't doing it. Um, so we could run it back. That's definitely a possibility. Benavides maybe wins on points over five rounds. And then the other side of things is that maybe you give it to Formiga. And then the other side of that, as he brought up, is that Brendan 
Moreno is going to have a fight very soon at Flyweight, and they could just potentially make that one for the title. Let's see, where is this one going to take place here? I'm looking for it. Uh, let's see, I'll be right back. Oh, it actually is uh, against Formiga himself, the number, uh, I believe, two guy in the division. So they could just move Moreno and Formiga to be the flyweight championship coming up on Fight Night 170 in Brazil on March 14th. So just a few weeks away. There's a lot of different options they can, you know, play things out here. Formiga is from Brazil, so it might be, you know, a good time to make that call. I'm not sure where things will ultimately go. I don't know if I want to see it run back. You know, Benavides had so many chances to dance, and he just hasn't been able to get it done. And... I don't know, just kind of disappointing not to have a champion after, uh, you know, the way things played out with the weight cut and the way it happened and everything, but I don't know why I'm so down. I mean, we got the fight correct, and that's all that really matters, right? So let's move on to the next one. In the next one, we got correct as well. We had Felicia Spencer defeat Zara Farron, and this one was pretty one-sided, I thought. Uh, Farron came out with some very good boxing at first, but uh, very quickly, Spencer put her down on the mat and put on a ground-and-pound assault, dropping elbows, heavy hands, and ultimately getting Mergliata to stop the fight. Uh, in this one, though, I wonder if Mergliata would let it go a little bit too long. Obviously, we had the coup de leba stoppage, which was not ideal, and so... Um, you know, maybe he let it go a little longer, so there'd be no question. But uh, either way, Fit Spence picked up a great win, and uh, I was happy to make that call. Moving on to the next one, the most controversial fight of the night: Magomed Ankalev and Ion or Iwan Kudaleba. So in this one, uh, it starts out kind of weird when they go to Ankalev. Uh, Bruce Buffer does to give the call out. Uh, Kudaleba, maybe it was Kudaleba's call. It, it doesn't matter. It's kind of a weird moment. Kudaleba goes right across the octagon, gets in Ankalev's face, and does the slit, you know, the cutthroat move and uh, angle of kind of funny fashion just kind of picks him up and throws him at the cage just kind of spins him around and uh you know he sends it back to his corner so kudaleba really aggressive to come in then the fight starts and it seems like kudaleba gets rocked very early on but it's hard to tell so i personally from my perspective i thought kudaleba was playing a little bit of a rope dope i thought he was baiting ankle to make him think he was hurt i think he was a little bit hurt but i don't know if it was as bad as you know the stoppage called for because every time Ankalev would throw something it didn't maybe you know after the initial rocking I thought Kudaleba was not getting you know really hit cleanly and I thought that he was kind of fainting a little bit to throw these big giant overhand shots which he did he would respond after you know catching a kick that he kind of caught with his hand and he'd throw a giant overhand in fact he was on the attack when the referee stepped in to call the fight and he was immediately angry about it I don't know if he would have came too quite as fast if he wasn't you know, playing a little bit of rope a dope. He wasn't playing a little bit of a bait. Uh, you know, it's a dangerous game to play that. And I think honestly, it came down to a little bit of referee and experience coming out of Virginia. And it also came down to the fact that the referee was probably on edge because of the way the fight started with Kudaleba coming over and you know causing kind of a scuffle before the fight had fight actually started i think the ref was probably just a little bit nervous about the whole thing and he called it early it also may have been just kind of a screw you to kuda if the referee felt disrespected in some way by him you know going toe-to-toe -to -toe before he called the match so it's really hard to say i think ultimately it was a bad call uh, i'm not actually going to count this one on the metric just because i thought it was a bad stop but i don't think it tells the whole story was ankle probably going to win yeah maybe you know he did land some big shots i think he had kuda hurt to some degree but there's no reason kuda -Leba couldn't have come back and landed a big shot of his own which he was throwing so i think at the end of the day i'm just going to throw out uh, the stats on it and just not count it across the metric. I'm going to count it as a loss because that's the end result. But uh, as far as the metric goes, I'm not going to count it in there. I just don't think it uh, has any business. So moving on to the next one, we had Megan Anderson defeat Norma Dumont. This was a great win for Anderson and calls into question who will take on Amanda News at 145 pounds. You had a great first round victory by Spencer. You had a great first round victory in Anderson, nearly taking the same amount of time in both contests, 337 versus 331 for Anderson. Um, who was the better fighter tonight? I'm not sure. You know, you have Spencer doing it on the ground. You have Megan doing it on the feet. Uh, I thought Megan looked a little more dominant over all but uh it's really tough to say it looks like uh megan actually got the performance of the night money just uh you know just throw that out there so maybe the ufc is giving her a bit of a nod i think that uh, megan looked like the hotter product coming into the ufc 
And so I think she's a bigger draw right now than Nunes, especially if they do it in like Australia or something like that, although they are talking about Brazil at UFC 250. So who knows? A lot of things up in the air. I'm not sure either fighter is ready to tango with Nunes, to be perfectly honest. Uh, But I I think I would go with Anderson on that one just because I think she has the bigger draw right now. And I think Nunes could uh, use a little bit more of a payday. So I think I'd side with Anderson in that one. But uh, again, picked up a great win, so I was happy to call it. Another one we called a great, uh, uh, great pick here. Grant Dawson defeats Derek Miner. Miner, yeah, I think Miner in that one. So um, great fight. Uh, Miner had him, you know, on the ropes. There were a lot of uh, guillotines, a lot of submission attempts, uh, it, but. Grant Dawson, man, he is tough as hell. He ended up taking Miner's back, a guy that is so synonymous with submission victories, a guy that I think has 21 submissions overall, and uh, he ended up submitting him himself in the second round, uh, despite uh, Dawson not making weight, I think, that he went out and put on a spectacular performance. He proved that he really belongs, uh, you know, as a top contender in the featherweight division, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more out of him. So another great win for us. The hits just keep on coming because i got to go to another win here. Kyler Phillips defeats Gabriel Silva, and this was one of our Patreon picks, another underdog. Kyler Phillips put on a spectacular performance. I thought he looked phenomenal tonight. Uh, great hands, great ground game, great cardio, great overall, and he beat a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black Black belt in Silva, who is tough as hell, but just doesn't have you know the stand-up game to compete with a guy like Phillips. He was throwing you know spinning side kicks uh, or spinning back kicks. He was throwing uh, wheel kicks. Uh, he was throwing flying knees. He had great hands and combinations. And he was just all over the place, and he was really fun to watch. And also got fight of the night money. So hats off to those guys. Another one we also got correct. Brendan Allen defeats Tom Breeze. This was a pretty one-sided affair. Allen scores the KO late in the first round and picks up a phenomenal performance. His hands look crisp. And uh, it, honestly, I'm not sure why Breeze tried to go to the mat on this one. You know, I think Allen uh, probably was going to take it there anyways. Uh, if you really want to fight your fight, I think uh, you keep it standing if I was Breeze. Uh, but, uh, you know, the guy has had some uh, mental We'll call it mental performance problems, not mental problems like uh, sports psychology problems in the past, but confidence and panic attacks, he doesn't be able to fight. And I think this was a mental lapse in the game of Tom Breeze, and he was not able to get it done. But uh, it worked to our advantage because we got a win along with Brendan Allen. And one that we did not get correct, though. Uh, also, the Brendan Allen fight was a Patreon pick, so I was happy to make that one as well. Marcin Tybura uh, defeats Sergey Spivak. This one we did get wrong. Uh, Tybura came out, put on a great performance. Uh, Spivak wasn't able to score any takedowns at all, even though he was kind of a takedown machine coming into this fight. Uh, his hands were crisp, but he was not landing enough. He was outstruck 2-1. to one. He's also taken down twice, and it was just a dominant performance out of Tybura, who hasn't looked that great lately, but uh, ultimately... He did uh, put it on and uh, pick up a solid win. So, again, happy to call it. Uh, the next one we got wrong as well. Luis Pena defeats Steve Garcia. I thought Garcia looked really good coming into the first round. His boxing looked better than Pena. He was closing the distance despite having a small reach disadvantage. And uh, Pena just wasn't having the boxing because he took his back for the next uh, basically 12 minutes. Uh, he took his back for the combined uh, second and third round despite uh, Garcia having a are having a triangle choke that was in pretty good to start the third, but he was not able to submit and hold on to it. Uh, ultimately, Pena gets a win there. Uh, I would like to see Garcia come back, though. He was actually kind of fun to watch. Uh, he was throwing these like weird you know, back punches while Pena had his back, and, and Pena kind of was wearing it at, by the end. Uh, so I think for the late replacement, uh, Garcia definitely deserves another nod. And uh, if he works on his ground game a little bit, he can manage to get back to his feet. Uh, I think uh, this fight maybe goes a little bit differently. Uh, but uh, hats off to Pena. He put in a spectacular performance here. Uh, next one, we got Jordan Griffin versus TJ Brown. I did not think I was going to get this one correct because TJ Brown was kicking the crap out of Jordan Griffin. Uh, but Griffin just rips a guillotine as TJ Brown is in side control of all places. He squeezes hard and he chokes Brown the hell out. Brown was just dominating seven takedowns, outstriking him two to one. Uh, he also had great ground attack as well. I don't know how TJ Brown ultimately lost this fight. We got it right, so I'm happy about it. But uh, Jordan Griffin put on a spectacular come from behind win, and I was happy 
to make the call. And then the last two here, Spike Carlisle defeats Air Elon Cruz. We got that one correct. And Sean Brady defeats Ishmael Nurdiev. Uh, to uh, pick up a unanimous win again we got it that one correct as well so like i said we only missed a couple went two and two on the patreon 75 percent accuracy i'm really happy with the results i would have liked to have come out a little bit better on top with some of the money uh, but when you play the underdogs you know you can afford to take a couple losses and still come out on top, and that's what we ended up with. Uh, so if you are listening to this and you want to get on the Patreon, please get there. I put the best picks on there, the ones that I like the most. If you're happy listening to the show, uh, you know, okay, please continue to listen. But head on over there. Check it out if you wish to support the show in any way. There is a dollar amount to support that uh, definitely can fit any financial budget. So just want to throw that out there. Uh, also, please feel free to get in touch with me. That's what I like more than even supporting. If you just want to write into the Fighting Spirit Podcast at fightingspiritpodcast at gmail.com or get in touch with me on Twitter at MMAFightPix01 or uh, Facebook, whatever you like, whatever suits your fancy, please feel free to reach out and get in touch. Uh, so that brings us to the end. The retrospective, we had a good night. Not a lot to say. Um, we actually, th- this card outperformed spectacularly. We had a lot of finishes. The unanimous decisions that we got were phenomenal, like the Kyler Phillips Gabriel Silva fight. Um, really fun night of fights. Definitely well picked. You know, I thought it was going to be a bit of a shit card because of the fights out there. But when you get to some of these no name guys, you get debuters, you get hungry fighters, and sometimes you end up with amazing stuff like this. So I apologize for saying this thing was going to be a bit crap or a bit shit. Uh, it actually ended up being a really fun night. It moved fast. Uh, I think the fans of Virginia got a hell of a show, and uh, this is what makes the UFC and MMA so much fun, is nights like tonight where you can learn about the up-and-comers and watch them you know, climb you know, the ranks of the UFC until they get to pay-per-view. So um, looking forward to you know seeing a couple of fighters we saw tonight climb those echelons and get up there. Uh, so we'll see how things play out for them. As far as things playing out for us, though, we're going to come back very soon with the fight picks for UFC 248, Adesanya versus Romero. I've actually crunched the main and co-main for those. I'm not really too shocked with who the predicted victors are going to be. I'll let you think about that. Uh, We'll be going live with that show, I think, tomorrow. No, we will not be able to do tomorrow. Well, I guess we could do tomorrow night. It's probably going to come out on Monday at this point. I've started crunching the fights. I may finish crunching them after this. Uh, fight show is done here, but we'll see how things go. If not, just look out for it on Monday. That's when I'm shooting to uh, release the next show. So uh, we're coming fast and furious into March. This is the 29th of February. We have a leap year this year, so uh, there probably won't be another March 29th show. Uh, just throwing it out there. I don't know what to say for four years from now. So uh, this this could be a one and done for February 29th leap year shows. Um, anyways, uh, until I speak with you again on the UFC 248 card. Oh, also, I just want to throw out there, we are talking about doing another review soon in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eye out for that. Uh, but until I speak with you again, either way, happy fight picking. <laughs>